Welcome to CentOS video number 11. In today's video, what we're going to do is take a look at managing packages on our CentOS system. Now, when I mention packages, what I'm actually talking about is the process of adding or removing software on our system. Now, package management has been referred to a few times in the series so far. And in a previous video, I did show you the GNOME software application, which is this one right here. And as you probably know, this GNOME software application represents the GUI way of installing, removing, and updating packages but you're not always going to have a GUI available as I've mentioned several times. So what I'm going to do is show you how to manage software via the command line. But before we do that, I want to give you guys a basic overview of how package management is structured on a Linux system. So GNOME software may kind of seem like an application store, so to speak. If you've used an iPhone or an iPad, you are probably more than familiar with the App Store. The Android platform has the Play Store. And there's even a Microsoft App Store on the Windows platform that basically nobody uses. Now behind the scenes, what we have here is repositories that store the available software packages. There are repositories all over the world and they sync to each other. So if a CentOS developer releases a new version of a package, they'll add it to the repositories, and then all the repositories around the world will synchronize, and they'll all have the same packages available. Traditionally, in the Linux platform, your computer will connect to the software repository that is closest to you geographically. Every now and then, your Linux system will need to resynchronize with its package repository to understand which packages are available and at what versions. Now, the software application here makes installing and removing packages very, very easy. And it's not even a hard concept at all if you're not using an App Store-like ecosystem like GNOME software. But it does abstract much of that from you, the user. You don't really see what goes on behind the scenes. Now, of course, just as a quick recap, if you browse through the available applications here, click on one, and then click Install, you can see that installing an application is about as easy as it gets. And now that this application is installed, I can now click on Launch to open it, or it's available now in the list of overall applications on the system that I can reach from the overview screen. And GIMP is a really cool image editing utility. And it's actually what I use for all the thumbnails on my channel. I know they're not great, but you know, it's something and this application allows me to do that. And that's basically an example of installing an application through the GUI. You've probably seen me do this in a previous video. And I can also click remove as well, but I'm not going to go through that again. I did show that in a previous video. I want to show you guys how to do it from the command line. So here we are at the terminal. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, one thing to note is that the yum command, which looks like that, has been for the longest time the official application to use for your package management needs on CentOS. Now, recently that has changed to DNF. DNF is short for dandified yum. Well, I guess that's what they're saying. But the takeaway is that DNF is the new way of doing things. It's the latest version of the package management tool. It is actually replacing yum. Now on our CentOS system, we actually have both binaries here on the system. Here is yum. You can see the path to the yum binary. And of course we have DNF, which is the new way of doing things. Now, I can't promise that both utilities will always be available. Maybe someday, if you are watching this video years after it was created, they may have removed YUM from CentOS, 
you might only have DNF. Now, I'm not a fortune teller, so I don't know when that's going to happen. It'll happen eventually, but in the Linux ecosystem, we just don't really sunset things very quickly. But what's interesting, if we do ls, let's do dash l against user bin yum, let's see what the permission string looks like. Now this is kind of weird, isn't it? I mentioned in a previous video that if the first character in the permission string is a D, it's a directory, and if it's a hyphen, it's a file. This is neither, it's an L. What is an L? Well, L means symbolic link. It's a way of linking one thing to something else. So they're actually having some kind of an illusion here because there is no yum on the system. There is only DNF. And if you type yum, which, of course, as we know, is this path right here. All it is is a link to DNF3, as you see right here. So then what is the permission string for DNF then? Well, let's take a quick look at that. That is also a link to DNF3. So if I type which DNF3, we can see that that is, in fact, a binary. So if I go ahead and use the ls command against that, We can see that it is colored green. It is a file. It has a hyphen right here. So this is the actual utility that is being used. So you might be wondering then, why are the CentOS developers putting a link that links the command yum to DNF? Because if you type yum, it's actually going to be typing DNF3. So this is the command that's actually being run. The reason that they do this is because in the Linux community, as Linux administrators, we will often write scripts to automate repetitive tasks. Some people out there, probably quite a few people out there, have written scripts that reference the yum command. Now with this style, those scripts will still work just fine. Reason being, if the script is calling yum as part of its code, then, well, it's automatically going to work because it's just going to redirect yum to DNF. But enough about that. Let's actually get to using it. What I'm going to do is go back to GNOME software, and I am going to remove GIMP. I'll put in the password, and we'll close this. Now GIMP is removed. If I go to the Activities Overview, GIMP is not present. Now it does show a link to it in the software application though, which is pretty cool. But what I'm going to do now is show you the process of installing GIMP via the command line. So what we're going to do is do dnf search GIMP. What the dnf command does, again, that's our package manager. That's what we use for all package management needs. We give it a keyword. We want to search the repositories for a package with the name GIMP in it. So I'll press enter. And it's going to refresh itself. It needs to resynchronize with the repositories because I haven't run this command in a while. Actually, to be honest, I cleared the database just to make sure you were able to see this happen. But now we have some search results here. And these search results are broken down in an interesting way. The first section says the name exactly matched, which means we have a package named GIMP. It's actually a longer package name than that. This is a 64-bit installation, and the dot x86-64 is basically just saying that this is the 64-bit version, but you only need to type GIMP. That's the actual name of the package if you want to reference that package. Now it's also going to show us results that have the word GIMP in it. So if we were not sure what the package name is going to be, which is why I had you search for GIMP, you search for something because you're not going to know the name of every package. You give it some search keywords and then you'll get some search results like this. And then you can make an informed decision as far as which package you may want to install. Now I already know that this is the package we want to install but I wanted to make sure you knew how to search for packages. Now, you've probably noticed I didn't use sudo and I am not logged in as root. When all we're doing is searching for packages, there's really no reason to need sudo or root. We don't need elevated permissions just to simply search the package database. We can do that without root. 
But if we want to install something, so if I was to do dnf install gimp and press enter, it tells me that this command needs to be run under the root user, which is pretty much to be expected. So all I need to do is put sudo in front of this, or I can switch to root, either one. I'll press enter, type in my super secret password. Now from the output here, it's giving us an overview of what it will do to satisfy the command. It's going to install one package, and this is the package right here that it's going to install. So I'm going to type Y for yes, I'll press enter. And now GIMP is installed, and if I check the activities overview, sure enough, GIMP has returned to the system. Now before we move on to removing packages, I'll recall the previous command here. And I'm going to talk about a pet peeve of mine, something that just really annoys me, and it's the dash Y option. Now if you remember, just a few seconds ago when I went to install GIMP, it asked me, are you sure, before it actually installed, I had to type Y and press enter. As you're probably able to guess at this point, the dash Y option assumes yes. It basically gets rid of that confirmation. Now, something like this is pretty much required when you are running a script to automate something, because if you are running a script and you're automating things, then that basically implies that there's nobody there in front of the server or the workstation to answer such questions. So dash Y is very useful for automating package installations. Now, my pet peeve is that a lot of people will use dash Y all the time, and I don't think that should be the case, because when we ran the output, it basically told us it's going to install one package. But what if there is an error in the package database, and it mistakenly wants to remove things? This doesn't happen very often. I've only seen it a few times. But if you say yes, you are saying yes to whatever it wants to do, for better or worse. I think it makes more sense to just Take the extra few seconds and just look at what it wants to do and make sure that you want it to do that. So let me give you another example. So what I want to do is search. So I'll do DNF search and I want to search for Vim. Vim is the text editor that I like to use and there are always several versions of Vim on your average Linux distribution that's available for installation. My favorite one is this one right here, Vim Enhanced. So here's a situation where I searched for a package name or a keyword, in this case Vim, and the package I actually want to install is not simply Vim, this is the one I want right here. So what I'm going to do is sudo dnf install, as you already know, Vim enhanced. I'll press enter. And here we have two packages that it needs to install. We only asked for Vim enhanced, which is being installed but it's also installing Vim Common as well. We did not ask for that package. Well, actually what that is, is a prerequisite. It's a dependency. As you can see right here, dependencies resolved. That's what DNF does for us. If a package we want to install requires dependencies, it will calculate that and make sure all of the required packages for the package you want to install are satisfied. And in this case, Vim Common is a package that's required by the Vim Enhanced package that we are intending to install. Another thing I'll note real quick is the EL8 here at the end. Now this is somewhat important to know if you are downloading packages or something like that from you know, some website or maybe another repository. EL8 means Enterprise Linux 8. CentOS is based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. As of the time I'm recording this video, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 is the latest major version. CentOS is basically a free version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and it is also at 8, you know, CentOS 8, that's what I installed in the series. And the packages in this database are also for Enterprise Linux 8, EL8. Now, you're probably never going to need to pay attention to that again, the rest of this entire series, but it's just something to note if you are downloading these packages offline, these come in an RPM format, which I'll get to in a minute. Anyway, what I'm going to do is say yes to go ahead and actually, you know what? I'm going to say no. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the dash Y option. 
I'm going to be a hypocrite, break my own rule, just to show you the difference. So I'll press enter. And no confirmation at all, it is installing both packages, the one I asked for and the required one as well. If I scroll up here, we see the same output. It's telling me what packages it wants to install. It has to install two packages. And actually in this case, it's an upgrade because I guess I had it installed already. And this was a success. This worked just fine. But as I mentioned, if it wanted to do something I didn't want it to do, the dash Y option would just assume yes, and it will go ahead and do it for better or worse. Anyway, that's how you install a package with DNF. So let's go ahead and remove a package. I will use GIMP as an example yet again. And it's pretty simple. sudo DNF remove and then the package name you want to remove from the system. I'll press enter. And it's going to go ahead and remove GIMP. So I'll do Y and then enter. And there you go. It removed the GIMP package from the system. GIMP is now no longer listed as an available application. Now, another thing that I want to show you guys is how to update your packages. This is very important because Sometimes, actually quite often, the CentOS developers will release security updates and it's very important that you keep your system up to date. As you are no doubt aware, you can use the GNOME software application to install your updates, but I'm going to show you how to do that from the command line. And it's actually pretty easy. It's simply sudo dnf update, just like that. I'll press enter. And wow, we have 553 packages to update. So actually what we have here on my laptop is an installation of CentOS that so far has never had any updates installed on it. And the longer it's been since the release of the distribution, since it came out, the more updates you will have when you get around to doing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. It wants to upgrade 553 packages. It's going to require 12 additional packages for dependencies or whatever reasons. And it needs to download 765 megabytes of packages here. So I'll say Y and then enter. And it's going to go ahead and start the process. And I will be right back as soon as this is finished. All right, and all of the upgrades, the package updates have been installed. The process is complete. Generally speaking, it's a good idea to reboot your workstation, laptop, or server when you update packages, especially if the kernel was updated, which is the you know main component of any operating system, the most important component. And you don't have to reboot. You'll hear Linux administrators brag about how long their server has been up. We call that uptime. And that's all well and good, but there's nothing wrong with rebooting. And there are ways to avoid uh, you know, reboots. Basically, there's something called live patching, which will help you do that. That's beyond the scope of this series. And in terms of actual applications, when they update like a web server, for example, you can simply restart the process. I'm not going to get into that in this series. I just wanted to let you guys know that it is possible to avoid reboots, but until you learn how to do things like that, rebooting is probably a good way to handle updates and to make sure that you are benefiting from the new security updates that no doubt come along with those new packages. So thanks again for watching guys. I will be back in another tutorial in this series very soon. In the next video, we will check out repositories, basically how to add a repository. It's gonna be a shorter video. It's a very important concept, and I will see you there as soon as I have that uploaded.